Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at a relatively new to the marketplace product here. This is the Mean Arms Bearing Delay Blowback Upper for a 9mm AR PCC. Now, there are a lot of 9mm ARs uh, that have come out in the last five or so years. It's become a really popular platform largely because, well, uh, IPSC or USPSA has uh, started having a PCC division that is fun and fast and easy to shoot and, well, a lot of fun. And 9mm is super cheap ammunition, and it's just really fun to blast away with a carbine that's easy to aim, effective, low recoil, easily suppressed. Like, it's no surprise that 9mm ARs have become very popular guns. Now, there are two major categories of 9mm ARs. There are the simple blowback ones, and there are the various delaying mechanisms. A simple blowback AR9 is very simple, as the name implies. It's just a bolt that's heavy enough to work in simple blowback. These tend to have relatively high recoil compared to the delayed action systems because that bolt is just slamming into the back of the receiver with every shot. And I mean, it's not like they're heavy recoil, but they're going to have more muzzle jump and more perceived recoil than you might expect from a 9mm carbine. And that's where all of the delayed systems come in. There are a variety of different ways in which you can use something other than just raw mass of the bolt to prevent the bolt from opening super quickly to keep it safe and to reduce the bolt velocity as it goes back, thus reducing felt recoil. And perhaps the most sophisticated and most finely manufactured of these that I have yet seen is this, the Mean Arms Bearing Delay System. So they actually started initially, I think in 2020, with the idea of doing a roller delayed AR9, essentially taking the operating mechanism from the MP5 and squishing it into an AR platform gun. And their original intention was to create a, a reduced cost training upper for law enforcement. The idea of 5.56 is expensive, but 9mm is cheap. Let's give you a replacement upper you can just drop onto the existing paper, like the existing firearms. The upper isn't a legal firearm by itself, so it's easy and frictionless to purchase and to move around. You just drop it onto the lower receiver of department M16s, and you can train at an indoor range with less noise and less cost and you know, less exp uh, it's easier overall. Now, it doesn't surprise me that while they say that's still part of their market, it's not a big part. Like, 9mm is not that much less expensive than 5.56, and I don't see a lot of departments really concerned about that sort of training aid. Instead, where this system has really taken off in popularity is with those competition shooters, because I said this was a particularly sophisticated system. It's also a very easily readily, readily tunable system that can be set up for really, really light recoil and really minimal muzzle climb, and that makes it a really good competition gun. So let's go ahead and pull this one apart and let me show you what the internal components actually look like and how it works. Okay, so first things first, Mean Arms only sells these as upper receivers. The lower here is a registered SBR uh, KP15 that I have myself that I dropped this upper onto. And that's one of the cool points of the way Mean Arms built this system, is it uses standard mil-spec uh, generic lower receivers, uh, lower fire control groups, the same buffer that you would use in your regular uh, AR. All those parts are totally interchangeable, and I think that comes from the original intention to use this as a reduced cost training aid. You don't want to have to change the lower receiver if you're if that's your marketing goal. So you might then wonder <laughs> how 9mm in Big Magwell, and the answer is Mean Arms also developed what they call the Endomag, which is an insert that you put into a, uh, a standard Magpul mag body, and it converts this from being a 5.56 mag to a 9mm Parabellum mag. Here's the insert itself. This, by the way, is shipped uh, as a 10 round magazine in this particular case, and it is notched here so that you can cut this blocking uh, strut off to increase it to, I believe, 15, 20, or standard uh, full capacity 30 rounds. Essentially, what they've done 
is replace the magazine spring here. You've got your follower uh, on the inside. This has the proper curvature for 9mm, and it allows you to use, well, it gives you a 9mm magazine that fits just fine in a regular 5.56 lower. Now, there are two versions of these magazines. Some of them have ejectors built into them, and some of them do not. The mean arms, uh, the, uh, the system here, uses ejectorless magazines because it has its own ejector built into the gun, again, so that it will interact uh, nicely with standard AR lowers. If you have a 9mm AR lower, if you want to use this with like a Glock magazine lower, you generally speaking can, but you'll need to take the fixed ejector out of your 9mm lower. Anyway, they also do a 40 round mag that is a made, a purpose built, made from scratch magazine. Uh, holds 40 rounds instead of 30, and it doesn't require you to have a PMAG body to put it into. So these both work in this upper. They have a bunch of different barrel lengths available. Uh, the shortest is four and a half inches, then seven and a half. This, by the way, is the seven and a half inch uh, barrel version. They all come with Mean Arms muzzle brake on there. Uh, you can also then get them in 11, 14.5, or 16 inch. And the 14.5, you have the option of whether you want the muzzle brake threaded or pinned and welded. So if you want to have one of these without involving a pistol brace, or an NFA registration. You can go with a 14.5 pinned and welded or a 16 inch. I think they're also in the process of releasing a specialized competition version that's 13 with a pin and welded break that brings it up to 16 inch. Anyway, I went for seven and a half on this, which they tell me is the most popular length. It seems to be a nice compromise. They then come with a really nicely made ambidextrous charging handle. Uh, the optic, it's a, a Gideon 1X prism that I put on there because we're going to be taking this out shooting uh, in a few minutes. But um, the whole thing comes as a, a fully assembled upper. They are expensive. These are like $1,400 and up, uh, depending on your barrel length. But what you get for that are a number of very nicely made parts. Charging handle's really good. Uh, the, the handguard is polymer, but it's not sort of the typical generic polymer I'm used to. It seems to be a pretty good heavy duty polymer. It's got its own molded in place barrel nut there. I don't know, it's a handguard. It does handguard things. Most importantly though, we have the bolt carrier mechanism. So when they say bearing delay, they are talking about these three ball bearings on the front end of the bolt. They went from two rollers in an HK style roller delay to three spherical ball bearings. And just like the roller delayed system, we have a, uh, a bolt that moves forward and back just slightly. So this is the unlocked position. When it goes all the way into battery, the bolt face here pushes backward. That forces these three ball bearings out of the bolt and into three locking recesses inside the barrel extension. So you can see one of them right there. You can see a second one through the ejection port there. And the third one is basically impossible to get a camera angle on inside there. But you've got three locking recesses that mate up with these three ball bearings. Now, if I take this apart, which by the way is really simple. Uh, the firing pin here, by the way, is held in place by this retaining spring. I'm going to leave it in there because, well, it's just a free-floating firing pin. All right, so that gives us these three critical parts. This is the, the core of the whole system. This uh, they call the lifter, and this is the equivalent of the locking wedge in a roller delayed system. Of course, it has three angled slots on it, or three angled tracks on it instead of two because you have three ball bearings in there. And one of the cool things that Mean Arms does is they actually offer, come back here, they have a variety of different lifters that they produce. And at first glance, these look identical, but the cam angles on them are actually each just slightly different. And each one of these corresponds to a different pressure range of ammunition and a different cycling time. So different geometry on the lifter will cause the system to, to open either faster or slower. And there is actually a, there are a pair of tables uh, in the manual. So this is barrel length over 11.5. This is barrel length under 11.5. And this allows you to look at bullet weight and velocity, and it'll tell you which of the lifters is going to be ideal 
for your setup. So using this, by the way, uh, we are going to be shooting this with the K lifter in here. We're going to be trying some 115s that should have a muzzle velocity of about 1200 feet per second. So that would sit there. I'm also going to try some subsonics. Those are, I have 147s and I have 150s that should both be about somewhere between 1000 and uh, 1050 feet per second. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to clock in at with this uh, seven and a half inch barrel, but they'll be here kind of borderline between the K and the H. Um, as they say elsewhere in the manual, these aren't uh, like strict hard limitations, they're just idealized settings. So K should be a pretty good system for us here. If you were one of those people who wants to tune this for optimum competition use, you can switch between, I mean, this gives you a ton of data with which to figure out exactly what lifter, what ammo is going to work best for you, as well as tuning the buffer that you have. So I just have a regular, uh, my regular, what would stoner do? Uh, buffer in there. It's a, a JP um, self-contained buffer spring. I'm just going to be using that today, but if you want to put in the work and really fine-tune this upper, you can change buffer weights as well as lifters. All right, anyway, uh, the other parts here, this obviously is the bolt head. It's going to hold the lifters. It also has the extractor and the ejector, and the ejector is another clever element here. They went ahead and actually put the ejector in the very center of the bolt face. Ejecting 9mm from an AR carbine can be a bit of a tricky proposition, and rather than use something like the spring-loaded plunger ejector in a regular 5.56 AR, or the fixed ejector, the problem is using a fixed ejector means this isn't going to be compatible with a standard lower. So how do you make a super reliable uh, ejector mounted in the bolt? Well, they figured we'll just make it the entire center of the bolt. So, so the firing pin is actually located directly inside, if I can get this set up, there we go, inside the center of the ejector. You can see it poking out right there when I push the firing pin in. But this whole center plunger itself is spring-loaded, and that is the actual ejector. This guy, then, is essentially the component that holds the cartridges down in the magazine uh, to keep them out of the way while the bolt cycles, because if you just had your bolt carrier and your bolt head, you run into problems of this hitting various elements of the front and back of the cartridge as it cycles. So we include this guy. This locks into the bolt head like that, and it's going to create a nice smooth surface along the bottom of the bolt. Super easy. Oh, I should probably actually put the lifter in, shouldn't I? All right, this is marked. This is our K lifter here, as denoted in the manual, K. So all I have to do is drop that on. There we go. Lifter's in place. I take these two, so this guy just drops in like that. And then we put this on, just align that. You really can't install this wrong because those three lobes have to line up with those three lobes inside. And this is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way exactly it's oriented. There we go, slide it in, and then rotate this into position. And there we go, that's all assembled. So that's the locked position, and that's the unlocked position. Like, it's not a lot of travel, but that's all it takes. And the force of these having to push this whole assembly backward, because what's happening here, it looks like this is moving back and forth up here. In reality, this is staying in place, and the whole mass of the bolt carrier behind it is what has to be pushed backwards. So the time that it takes these ball bearings being pushed against that angled surface of the lifter to move back just that short little distance, well, to move this back just that short little distance, that is all the delay that it takes to keep this from opening prematurely. Now, I want to point out here, the barrel is definitely proprietary to the mean arm system because it has this barrel extension with the three locking uh, recesses for the, the ball bearings, and they also have a pair of guide rods in here. That's kind of cool, and that's what the bolt carrier 
rides on. So those guide rods have machined surfaces, sorry, machined surfaces right down in here that they mate up with. And that makes for a really smooth operating system. Like when I first took this apart, I was genuinely very impressed with the, the manufacturing standards, as far as I can tell. Um, the, the, it's a very smooth operating system, much more so than a lot of the other 9mm ARs that I've had the chance to tinker with. So we're going to go ahead and put this back together here and go ahead and take it out to the range and see how it actually shoots. Uh, let's start with my endo mag of uh, 30 rounds. This is Magtac 124 grain generic ball, which according to their chart should be right on par, right in the middle of this buffer's optimal zone. I think I would probably want to increase the buffer weight on that a bit. It's a little bit kicky. Um, and man, I'm actually getting a decent amount of concussion from the muzzle brake. And Alrighty, I have replaced the buffer in this with a uh, 9mm heavy buffer, more intended for 9mm PCCs. Substantially heavier buffer than the JP silent capture spring that I had in there held over from using this as a 5.56. So, it did work with that JP Capture buffer, but the recoil impulse was a little snappy. Let's see uh, how much this tones it down. That is far, far better. So, kind of there, there's your hands-on introduction to tuning 9mm PCCs. Um, you could go way farther than this, of course, but that has rendered this really nice and pleasantly shootable. Um, you'll notice it does lock open on empty magazines. Now, I'm curious, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. This is 147 grain, again, Magtech subsonic. Muzzle velocity should be right around 1,000 feet per second. Let's see how that feels. That's actually even better. Uh, that balances out with this lifter and that buffer really quite nicely. All right, well, this is definitely not the El Cheapo special for 9mm ARs, but if you're looking for a delayed blowback system, you want something for competition, you want something that you can tune to be really nice and shootable, and something that has a lot of engineering that went into its development, more so than just add mass to a simple blowback till it works safely and call it good, uh, Mean Arms has a lot going for it. So I think they're pretty cool. They're definitely the higher end option. This is not the, the budget option for nine millimeter ARs, but uh, as far as I can tell, very nicely done and uh, worth the money that goes into it if that's what you're looking for. So we're gonna do a little bit more shooting with their standalone 40 round mag. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks to, uh, thanks to Mean Arms for sending the upper for me to film. Thanks to you for watching.